Hello everyone, this is Alicia Zari, one of your Sunnyvale Math Tosas. And this is March, 2022. And we know that there are a lot of questions around what does CAST testing look like? We haven't done it in a few years. So this video is going to be about um, how CASP is scored, at least for math, um, what our recommendations are in terms of priority standards and what to focus on for instruction, as well as um, how to include more problem solving and performing performance tasks in your instruction. Um, this entire year, we've been talking about going slow to go fast, um, having a restorative restart, and then March hits and we go, oh no, the test is in April. What are we gonna do? Um, but we want to remind you that our goal is not to take away all of those important SEL principles and cram for test prep, but really to focus on um, focusing on depth over breadth in doing what we've always been focusing on, building confident problem solvers with strong foundations in math, both conceptual and procedural. So for those of you that are new and have not um, administered CAS before, or maybe it's been a few years, so you want a refresher. The CASP test is an adaptive test for the computer adaptive test, the CAT test. All students will begin with procedural items. Then based on their success with those items, conceptual items will follow. And sort of like we've done with NWA, it ramps up, um, continuing to become more complex to kind of see students threshold. Um, the most interesting thing to me as a former third through fifth grade classroom teacher is I did not know that the performance task, which is what you might do the second day, um, is weighted as much as six to ten times as much as those adaptive, more procedural questions. So what does that look like? That first day, the computer adaptive test has problems that look like this. Usually it is, um, there's almost, it looks like a calculator, but really it's just to fill in their numbers, um, fill in their answer to click true and false, matching, multiple choice, um, no more just bubble in like we might've taken when we were younger. And then the performance task looks like this. It usually has some level of information or context uh, it will start off with very low level types tasks um, using the information from that context, and it ramps up to students explaining and justifying their thinking. So how is the CASP scored? Um, I know that in all my years of teaching, uh, we always focused on getting students ready for this test, but nobody told me how is it scored? So there are actually four mathematics claims that it is scored on. The first one is students can explain and apply their math concepts and carry out math procedures with precision and fluency. That's the stuff that they're doing on the computer adaptive test, but it actually only accounts for 40% of their grade. Um, I think about all the times that I race to cram and make sure that every single unit was covered only to find out that all of those lessons I raced uh, for coverage, not mastery, didn't actually uh, guarantee that they were going to show up on a student's test. Um, but instead, we now know that 60% of their grade is actually through problem solving. Um, this claim number two, students can frame and solve a range of complex problems, applying their mathematics, um, standards for mathematical practice number three, students can construct viable arguments to support their reasoning and critique the reasoning of others, kind of like the puzzled penguin or the um, so-and-so said this is how they solved it and someone else said this is how they solved it, which one's correct and why. And finally, claim number four, which is really that real world scenarios and context, um, including mathematical models. On the parent end, Usually we, as teachers, we give the CASP April, May, hopefully not June, um, and then we don't know what happens to it. The scores usually happen um, and reported over the summer. They're given to families, and then we come back in the fall and may or may not have access to that information. And so on the parent side of things, I always wondered, 
do does it break it down sort of like an NWA report? Does it say by strand or is it by math claim? And so you can see here that parents don't see your child was proficient in fractions or your child was proficient in numbers base 10. They actually get reported based on those claims we just saw in the previous slide. Concepts and procedures, problem solving, and communicating reasoning. And I'm imagining this year they will not have multi years of data um, in elementary, but in a typical year, they would get to see if their child is progressing over time. I'll take a minute for you to read this as I read it aloud. For students to meet standards on the adaptive testing portion of SVAC, student instruction must focus on conceptual understanding and apply it to problem solving. If instruction is focused on procedural knowledge, the students will not advance to the higher weighted questions. Again, it's adaptive. So you want them to be successful early on so that they can get to those higher weighted, um, more challenging problems. More emphasis should be given to performance tasks and students writing explanations and justifications. And this was actually information from someone who was um, one of the original CASP writers which in Sunnyvale District, this is why we've been focusing on formative assessments um, throughout the school year. In Tri-1, we talked about the formative assessment cycle, using a rich task and looking at student work. Some of you um, have started incorporating more rich tasks throughout your unit instead of just waiting till the end of the unit for um, a performance task. This is the model that San Francisco Unified Curriculum follows. We've also focused on building conceptual understanding, building models, having students construct meaning, not just focus on the procedures, as well as re-engagement. Based on what my students are doing, um, here's where I notice I might re-engage with this math talk, or I might pull a small group. Um, if you'd like more tips for that in the link, you can find the what is re-engagement um, video for you. So. We can't go back to the fall. We can only start, we are in March. So where do we go from here? Our recommendations are to really start by just having students build familiarity with what the test types and the test structure will look like. That doesn't mean drill and kill. It means giving them exposure to the practice test. It doesn't mean having to do them all on their own. It could be pulling it up on the screen for you to go through as a class. Notice how this one's multiple choice. How can we weed out some of the um, questions or the answers that don't even seem reasonable? good test taking strategies. There's also things like geometry and measurement tools that students may have never had access to. And so practicing how to click and put dots on the coordinate plane um, is an important thing to do now rather than during the test when you can't actually help them. We also recommend spending more time practicing performance tasks. That means using this time not to cover every content area, race through to the end of your, your workbook, but instead focus on performance tasks. Um, finding rich Mars tasks, using the SFUSD tasks, problems of the month, so students can unpack what does the context in those words mean so they can interpret. You have not used the three read strategy, check that out for unpacking real world problems, um, as well as justifying their thinking using words, pictures, and numbers. If you have time, we know that because we are testing early in April, you will not most likely get to cover everything in your school year. Many of you have said, I'm taking a slower pace. I'm even behind what I would have done in a previous year because I wanted to focus on addressing unfinished learning and filling in some of those potential gaps before going to um, grade level content or addressing it as we go, just in time intervention. And so, Typically, things like geometry, things like measurement have been pushed to the end of the year, try three, and we don't have May and June to teach those concepts. So what I recommend is taking advantage of the instructional routines you have in your classroom. Things like math talks. Um, before I've ever taught a fourth or fifth grade geometry unit, I can use a which one doesn't belong and which is a familiar routine in my class and see and gauge what students already know. In this example alone, we were able to 
um, gather about 20 vocabulary words related to our geometry unit, from the shapes to angles to parallel to perpendicular, things that I would have explicitly taught. And I was able to gauge what their starting place was and give exposure to vocabulary practice. Similar to the same but different routine that some of you are using for ELD, compare and contrast, you can expose students to some of those concepts you may not get time to do as deeply. Similarly, we've been talking at a lot of schools about math games to build fluency, um, giving students practice to have automatic retrieval of those facts. Um, some teachers have recommended that they're going to try teaching their typical current unit, say they want to do their fractions unit four days a week, but on Friday they save it for problem solving, or Friday they save it, fun Friday is um, review of multiplication facts, things to build that um, fluency with students. And last but not least, continue to emphasize a growth mindset um, and perseverance when taking on challenges. And this is the link for some of the Joe Bowler and U-Cubed mindset resources you might have done at the start of the year. To wrap up, um, if you are wondering what should I cover, I only have a little bit of time to prioritize some units. If you have not yet seen these priorities from Achieve the Core, you'll notice that what's in green are the major clusters, and then the supporting and additional clusters are not as important for that school year. Also at the link, you'll see what our um, math ad hoc committee created last year, which are more information about those priority standards, as well as curating some of those MARS and SFUSD tasks that can help you do some practice around performance and formative assessment. So please take a look at those links if you have not done so already. Um, we also have those for fourth grade as well as fifth grade. If you have never seen the Achieve the Core coherence map and you wanna know more about the standards, for example, it came up recently in third grade, um, around measurement. One curriculum says I have to teach customary units, inches, yards, and the other curriculum didn't include that at all and only did liters, grams, meters. And so what, what's the focus? Going back to the standard rather than the curriculum is important. So on here you can see what the standard actually says and if you click on assessment items, it actually shows you what would students need to be able to know and do on the assessment. There are some NWA assessment items as well as Smarter Balanced. And when we looked in this case, students didn't need to be able to convert metric units like we might have practiced in the past. Um, all they needed to do was see that leaders represent a type of measurement and actually use it to problem solve their operations. 48 liters divided by eight classrooms is six. Much less of a focus on um, actual measurement and more on applying operations in real world contexts. Um, last but not least, hopefully you've been able to click around on our monthly math messages, but if you have other questions and would like more support with what should I plan, how might I um, prioritize my units, or what does the standard really mean? Please join um, Robin and I at uh, Math Office Hours every Thursday on Zoom. Um, you can also email us and we can respond that way as well. So good luck, don't stress. This is a unique year. We know all the principles we've set the whole time about um, addressing the whole child and knowing that any one assessment is just one uh, dipstick check on where they are in time, but it doesn't represent who this student is. So thank you for watching and feel free to click the resources for more information.